come on. Get them shackles off him. Poor son, can't eat proper. Dunno, not sure I like that. What if he runs for it? He's worth a heap of coin. Ah, bollocks. Been all in him a week, hasn't tried a thing. Why are you up and bolt now? Matter of fact, got to thinking. What did a sweet, gentle chap like him do to get the Queen of Zedicania so riled? She's a shrew, that's what. Queen and witch in one. <laughs> Worst of both worlds. Enough about her. What do you say to one more of your tiles? While well, we toss down some cards. Ah, oh, why not? And since you mentioned one queen... The year 1267, war hung in the air, its scent palpable. The mighty empire of Nilfgaard stood poised, greedily eyeing the northern realms just across the Yaluga. In light of the threat, the realm sovereigns met in summit. They made declarations, pledged fraternal assistance, forged alliances, and then, in good spirits, dispersed. Among them, Meave, Queen of the twin realms Lyria and Rivia. Know the name? Hmm? Heard her beauty extolled? <laughs> Justly so remarkable she was. Not for her graceful exterior, but for her persistence and courage. Where was I? Ah. As the Queen and her retinue neared her capital, Count Caldwell appeared. In Meave's absence, the Count was to have helped her son, the youthful Prince Willem run the Twin Kingdoms. Caldwell had clearly ridden hard. Drops of perspiration dangled from his whiskers, his neck red and chafed from a rough, starched stiff. Hail, Your Majesty. Delighted to see you in good health. The summit, it ended fruitfully, I hope? Yes, at its end, letters were exchanged, documents signed, paper. Time will tell of what value. That will suffice as cordialities go, Caldwell. Tell me what's happened, for I sincerely doubt she a longing prompted you to ride out. Indeed, Your Grace. Another circumstance inspired me to do so. <clears throat> the strays of Sparla, the bandits, I was attend to during Your Grace's absence. The situation's gotten out of hand, I fear. Steady, Caldwell. Come now. Deep breath. All right. Speak. What has happened? Be precise. As your grace ordained, I set out and was nipping at the bandits' tails for long. We pursued for weeks, until scouts returned, having sighted the strays' camp in the forest near Lockeran. We waited for nightfall, to surprise them as they slept. Uh, alas... It proved a ruse. We found the tents empty. Straw stuffed dummies around the fire. Soon, we learned that as we waited for the sunset, the strays had snuck away, rounded our positions and ridden to Hawksburn. I beg your pardon, my lord. The tax collectors. That is where they station. So the gold? All of it? Uh, it's stolen. Your Grace, but I shall do all in my power to recover it. This I vow, if it be Your Grace's wish. After weeks in the saddle, Your Grace's wishes are modest. A hot bath and a night's sleep in her own bed. Yet, they shall have to wait. I must look personally to this matter. Your force, Caldwell, I will now command. You, send a herald to Hawksburn. 
They must prepare for the Queen's arrival. Air the rooms, dust off the porcelain. Make certain they do it. Do you see now, Reynard? I believe I foretold it would be thus. My son wasn't ready in the least to rule an entire country. I confess, Prince Willem has much to learn yet. Hmm, yes. And very little time. over a fire till she told him where she buried her gold rather die than tell him she would but I know where she kept it sit tight sketch it out for you Count Caldwell rode at the column's head, scanning its flanks with a wary eye that, despite his advanced age, proved very sharp indeed. Your Majesty! Bandits! There! At the tree line! The Count's footmen, unaccustomed to escorting their Queen, sought to shield her with their bodies and assumed a tight formation to do so. They were promptly knocked aside as Meade charged headlong at the bandits, brandishing her blade and bellowing a ferocious cry. from half a league away. To attack the Queen? An outrage! Your Grace, the men await. You must lead to begin the attack. Abolista, your command. Ah, 
salt of the earth they are, your grace. They'd follow you into fire. You need simply say the word. Teach you to respect the crown, you dogs! Bigger they are. Look out! Seek cover! We are bombarded! A lesson in humility coming now. This half is. <laughs> this stray's took tail and run. <laughs> yes! Our victory is assured. Sound the horns. May they sing praises of this triumph for ages. Battle's not yet done. It is better to conserve our strength. Prepare for a strike that will prove decisive. Battle formation! Protect the Queen! I'm a monster. Thing about slings, they hide well. My spirit's willing, and how the these damn boots are killing me. <laughs> There's a time to reap, a time to sow. I congratulate you on your latest victory, Your Grace. The bandit stood not a chance. <clears throat> Matters seem indeed to have gotten out of hand, to put it mildly. Meave said, arms crossed atop her shining breastplate. They've grown bold. Doubtless after the raid on the manor, the tax collectors. I've not heard of an ambush on the high road afore. Caldwell explained, avoiding his liege's wrathful gaze. Enough, Caldwell. We must put things right. Come! The Queen's retinue set out, cavalry in front, infantry and arbalists close behind, and, following in the rear, the bandits, bound in chains. Ah, oh, I do adore this prospect. Yes, Lyria, the Pearl of the North, with its hills and dales. Why, its beauty matched only by that of its queen. After three weeks in the saddle, I've my doubts, Count. We shall pitch camp here. Our soldiers need respite. A spell of it they deserve.
bit of respite, Reynard. Uh, yes. But if you've any new orders, Your Grace, I can be ready at any... At ease, Reynard. At ease. Don't you find it wearisome sitting alone? Wouldn't you prefer another's company? Swapping tales with the innkeep, even? Your concern, I most appreciate, Your Grace. But I prefer silence. Has it always been thus with you? Ever a man apart? Quite the contrary, Your Grace. As a youth, I gloried in company. Delighted in conversation. So what was it that changed you? That delight nearly cost me my head. But... Do you truly not know the tale, my lady? How I came to be your departed husband's aid? I don't. But would gladly hear it. I had but twenty winters behind me when I enlisted. Yet I was granted the rank of lieutenant from the start. Not by merit, but by birth. The respect of veteran officers, both my peers and seniors, that they could not grant. Nor did I deserve it. To earn that respect became my driving aim. And to seem wise beyond my years, I began spouting off about the King's decisions. This maneuver Reginald botched, that he failed to think through. And yet elsewhere he'd blundered like a schoolboy. Talk of that nature could only ever result in misfortune. It was not long before I was clanking about in shackles. Another officer had reported me. I was charged with Les Majesty. The court martial took but a quarter of an hour to deliver verdict and sentence. I was guilty of treason and the noose awaited me. But Reginald first stayed the execution, then ordered that I repeat every word I'd uttered about his person or deeds. Soaked with sweat, my voice cracking, I did as he ordained. Reginald listened, raptly and silently, and when I'd finished, he declared I was right. He then appointed me his personal aide. A clever lad like you, I can always use at my side. Indeed. Though hardly sharp himself, wisdom in others Reginald both recognized and heeded. It was then I swore two things. Firstly, never again to wag my tongue like a fool. Secondly, never to betray his trust. And you never did. Know what he told me moments before he passed. Trust none of them, Meave. Save Reynard. The old sod was right about that, at least. I thank you for sharing that tale, Reynard. Truly. Alas, I've come to fear villain might simply not be cut out to be a king, let alone a good one. A harsh judgment, Your Grace. Let's not be hasty. The Prince has but sixteen summers to him. And he's thus fully grown. The crown he should be able to bear at his age. Yet I left the land in his care for but a few months, and look what's become of it. Bandits roam and loot unchecked. We might yet learn of mitigating circumstances. Events beyond his control. Would that it was so, Reynard. Would that it were so. Elsewise, we must hope Anseus will demonstrate more wit than his brother. Though I see little chance of that, either. It's time I attended to other matters.
this what I pay taxes for? To be robbed along the high road, and in broad daylight, no less? Were it not for mandatory merchant routes and stacking rights, why I'd have gone round, through Sodden. They told me, they told me, Lyria's a wild land, lawless, chaotic, a damn disgrace. They told me, they told me, Lyria's a wild land, lawless, chaotic, a damn disgrace. Gods of mercy! Whatever is this filth? Necrophages. Drawn here by blood scent. For such vile monstrosities to prowl the high roads of my realm. I won't allow it. Attack! Daylight, with the heat positively sweltering, have we to do with some manner of sorcery? We shouldn't exclude the possibility, my lord, and great caution we must exercise. Raylan, what is this? Some spectre? A strigger? I can't be sure, your grace. It's the first I've seen of any such... thing. Abolist at your command. These carrion eaters. I know them. Appeared on my estate last spring, enticed by the corpses of those of my sheep that fell. Harmless at first. Until, that is, they fill their guts. Seem to become quite powerful, then. Fearsome they look, true. But they bleed just as we do. Onward! Slay the filth! We routed the beast before they had a chance to gorge. Yet more come. They fill their bellies, ma'am. This doesn't bode well. Oh no. Not well at all. Maria! <laughs> Strong as steers they've grown. And they show no fear. Frenzied, my lady. It's bloodlust. They lose all instinct to survive, feel no pain whatever. I've witnessed this before. 
Your Majesty, we must give ground. Fall back. We can't win. Must minimize our losses. My Queen, there is no shame in seeding the field when fortunes turn sour. now. We shall not retreat. Arms at the ready. Attack! Look there. Yet another abomination. Ugh, that stench. My salts. Where are my salts? We must trust each other! Heads. The beasts hadn't a chance against us. Victory is ours. and retinue arrived at Hawksburn. The men stationed there they found standing at attention, baking under the blistering noonday sun. Your Majesty, Count Caldwell. Stand at ease, Sergeant, and report. The local peasants we've rounded up in the yard, Your Grace. Expect they might have lent the bandits aid. Yet our courtesy hadn't inspired them. 
They haven't peaked a word. Might it please your grace to summon the hangman? He ties a noose for them, should have them jabbering right quick. I'll speak to them first. Your Majesty, for the Queen to question commoners, why, it's simply not proper. Whom for? I shan't be stripped of crown and titles for it, so no impediment do I see. Lead me to them. Bow low for your sovereign, Her Majesty, Queen Meave of Lyria and Rivia. Her mercy, Your Grace. We bear no guilt, we simple folk. Calm your hearts, good folk. Though your queen I may be, you are subjects, not slaves. Meave extended a hand, the royal ring gleaming upon it. Unfamiliar with protocol, a pleb gripped it firmly and gave it a shake as hearty as a good scrub in the tub. My, we shall be addressing one another by name afore long. This is an outrage! Guards, grab him! I've all in hand, Caldwell. Forgive me, Your Grace. I'm not accustomed, no. Nonsense. You've a firm grip, a spry handshake, and a bold spirit I can respect. What do they call you, man? Helmer. Son of Florence. Delighted, Helmer. Now understand me, man. I am in dire straits and in need of your aid. So please, answer my queries in full and forthrightly. The bandits. Whom do they follow? Him, my lady. We've seen him. No name, just an odd title. The Duke of Dogs, they call him. My. A blue blood thoroughbred mutt. Where are he and his hounds bound? Did he say? That I recall, Imogen? What do you name? A Gleaton or something? Clayton. Lord Clayton. His estate lies to the south. Sound the horns. Have the men form up. We march at once. Milady, I'll be no eye for the Duke. He's a good man. Gave us proper brass for the welcome we gave him. Shared what grub he had. Shut it, louts. The Queen's had her say. Your Grace, your orders. What are we to do with them? The Duke of Dogs fed you, so you've strength enough to carry arms. And as he gave you coin, you've no need of pay from the realm's coffers. Sergeant, all men of 15 summers or more will join our ranks at once. They'll serve five years. No, my lady, no! T Tis mere weeks to harvest. Who'll tend to fields? Meave set off toward Lord Clayton's estate at a gallop, her mother oh. knocking the peasants aside as it kicked up a cloud of dust. The folk of Hawksburn spoke of the royal visit long after, albeit ever behind closed doors and in harsh tones. What is this, Reynard? Bandits attacking royal tax collect. Save yourselves! 
Your Grace, the wagon, we can use it as cover. Forward, we must move it forward. Summon your comrades, damn it! Chup chup! Before I reach for my whip! Abolista, your command. Wagon now. Oh. We've come through, Raynard. I thank you. The walls of the temple collapsed. The buttress is doubtless damaged by something. Or someone. There's nothing we can do here. We ride on. A peasant cart, loaded with a heap of hay, came rattling down the road from the opposite direction. Clear the road! bellowed Count Caldwell, standing in his stirrups. Make way for your queen! The peasants obediently turned their cart into the roadside nettles. As she passed, Meave glanced towards it and froze. Atop the hay bale lay a badly wounded man gripped by fever. The thick, sweet stench of rot wafted from his bandaged legs. Gods! Who did this to him? Meave asked. Bandits? Nay, milady, replied the cartman. T'were a beast. Out to the east, down Wetterton Way, lies a boneyard, old as the elves, they say. The peasant continued. Clitton was setting snares round about there. Came running back to us, drenched in blood, rattling on about a long-haired wench come climbing out a grave. We've taken him to the good sisters of Melitale here on bridge. Perhaps they can help him. I'm certain they can. And will, replied the Queen, though just looking at the wounded wretch, she knew he'd expire before nightfall. God speed you on your journey. The Queen whistled, and her mare resumed its trot. Shall I send for a witcher, Your Grace? Caldwell asked. One of those freaks should make short work of the monster. Until we apprehend the bandits, I shan't allow a single soul to leave our company. Even on such an important mission as finding a witcher. Meave replied. Any who did would be captured at once. But, if fate brings us near Wetterton, perhaps we'll see to this monstrous Harridan ourselves. Your Grace, we've only just fought beasts and scarcely escaped with our lives. This she-beast will take a silver sword. Magic formulae. Yet a dozen arbalists will have to suffice. The Queen said, calmly but firmly. And please, Caldwell, do stiffen your spine a bit. Now onward. <laughs> 